Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Here are five super easy approaches on the piano to accompany yourself. You could be a beginner, you could be a intermediate person or whatever, but these are five approaches which I mean they are easy to play and I think also very easy to understand. It doesn't require a lot of music theory and a lot of the technical stuff and definitely not a lot of notation and things like that so some of our youtube videos are like this a bit more freer viewing so to speak so i encourage you to get your keyboards out get a notebook out if possible and uh, play along with me whatever i do in the video it'll be great if you can follow along if you're new to the channel hello there's a subscribe button up there somewhere or down there somewhere click that please uh, there's a bell also for those of you who don't know that will give you all the notifications whenever we go live whenever we drop a new video or in our channel's cases a daily riff so without any further delay let's get cracking first approach would be a fifth chord in the right hand now let's first figure out what a fifth chord is a fifth chord is not like those major and minor chords with three notes it just needs two notes fifth chords for piano we just steal them from the guitarists who call it power chord and we don't play it in the power area of the left hand played in the right hand instead so if you take one fifth chord there's something magical which can happen just with this one fifth chord so what am i playing right now i'm playing a g fifth so g fifth will be root fifth octave root perfect fifth in the octave right you can invert that chord as well you can do d g d you can also do g d g and remember this tutorial is to accompany yourself on the piano not necessarily to play a tune on the keyboard you're going to be singing something so you go fifth chord just hold it or play it on a pulse and let's say this fifth chord is part of a scale g major scale what's the one of g major g right so play some g's I'd always encourage you to try and sing something because it's for the purpose of accompanying. So you should sing. Now what did I do there? I moved from the G root to to a, to a very legal note in the G major scale, right? E is there, so I moved from the root. to the 6th and the bass movement makes all the difference for your harmony it's not necessarily what all you change in the right hand yes the right hand change does matter but the left hand dictates it it governs the way your song is actually moving in a journey so ta na 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 la da da di 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 do So check that out. Right hand did nothing to move. It it just stayed there. And look at the left hand. It just played G E C D or something. Something in the G major scale. Let's just keep exploring. Na 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 your voice can influence the choice of the left hand sometimes the left hand could decide or influence your voice what you sing like for example that's a bit more uplifting so you end up singing what you're playing so that's the five so usually at the five it's a cycling note so it's the five of the scale so it's a dominant it wants to come back to a loop and then i would encourage you to create a loop using the fifth chord with a moving bass don't overdo it with the bass so ta na 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 no la da da re re da 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 na 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 no re sound 
is peaceful as well the fifth chord is not telling you that it's happy or sad it's like a very neutral sound so if you are on a g minor key or some minor songs use this i'm on the g minor now okay so and you can do these things which you could never do with chords you can do like a minor 6th going to a major 6th that's something you can't do with when you're playing actual chords it's very tricky even if you're a guitar player watching this you may agree with me na 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 now even that f sharp which is wrong it kind of still works na 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 you can get a very phrygian sound by playing those dissonances the too flat so the fifth chord don't think of it as happy or sad it's a very neutral sound and it's all down to your left hand doing its thing usually the right hand of the piano is considered the creative hand but with this way of harmonizing or accompanying i'm sure you'll agree that it's actually your left hand doing all the work your right hand is well just fixed it's just a pillar it's just staying there right so that was one way i think you can use as a beginner or at any level to just make some music or accompany yourself or if you're given a chord progression and maybe you don't know inversions or shifting of chords becomes a bit tricky you could read the chart g e minor c major d major let's say that's that's your chart you can just play g major don't think of it as g major you know think of it as a g fifth because you are in the key of g and just play the root notes of all those chords in the left hand g e c d so use this technique to kind of freely accompany yourself playing songs you don't even need know the chords to for example i don't know the chords to to this song twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are so i'm just kind of feeling it i know i'm on the g scale and just looking at any of those seven notes so let's you and the sky is the limit here you know twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are also kind of makes you sing something creative na 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 so high i could i mean in the sky it's also great for gospel music because a lot of the the hymns we play in church are extremely sophisticated harmonically the 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 notes move in counterpoint they move in choral or orchestral harmony so it becomes very tricky to kind of play chords for a hymn or for a traditional uh, uh, church song so this technique can really help you for example if we pick amazing grace how sweet the sound ta da 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 do like me kind of works with just a fifth there i want was lord but now i am found was blind you can explore but now i see helps you to navigate through very complex songs as well like like hymns in a gospel scenario 
right so this is a good strategy i think to to get cracking on the piano however i'm not done with the lesson i have four more let's move on to the next way to accompany yourself super easy on the piano right so a lot of people on our channel seem to watch my arpeggio lessons so for uh, some reason i tend to go overboard with the concept there are a lot of advanced things out there on the channel where we add some notes we do some fancy runs and stuff but in this part to accompany you just need to take a chord and just go just figure out how do you break this up over a pattern so let's say you're counting quavers 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and this is my chord 2 and 3 and so how do you play a note for all those divisions right 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so you could do something like this there we go so while playing this arpeggio just look how basic it is right it's just the chord starting with the bottom note the middle note the high note and just kind of rounding them and that's an arpeggio it's that simple l m h m as i like to call it or you can jumble it around you can do high middle low middle high middle low middle stuff like that or maybe you could do high low middle low high low middle low high low middle low you could apply this technique to accompany yourself for any song which i guess is more like a ballad like an adele song for instance will work na 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 can change your arpeggio now if you're on a 3 4 kind of a scenario like you can just play three notes of the arpeggio 1 2 3 1 stuff like this na 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 broken da 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 di di da 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 di da da do one or if you're doing 6 8 what you can do is you could play three notes and then add the pinky to add up to the octave so you can do things like basically swing music na 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 so nice so these are some basic arpeggios to get you to you know accompany yourself and moving forward another strategy to re- to quickly accompany yourself on the piano is what i call as the ballad ratios now think of your hands as ratios so if you take 1 is to 4 this is how you go 1 is to 4 1 2 3 4 1 <clears> 2 that's pretty much it so your uh, two hands are colliding at the same time 1 2 and then the other hand kind of goes a bit extra 1 2 3 4 so if you take a chord you're going to want to play the actual chord in the right hand as generally you play chords around middle c and above it not you know here sounds very muddy there so right hand 2 3 you can play it around here and the left hand you're going to probably play the bass or the root of the chord right but you need to play this pattern such that it's 1 2 3 4 1 2 okay 4 1 or anything it could be 1 2 
three, one if it's a waltz. Birthday to you, two, three, one, stuff. Three blind mice. Oh, I don't know why I'm singing nursery rhymes in all my videos. People have been complaining, so we need to figure that out. Okay, so you take the one is to four. Again, our favorite uh, G minor chord now. So check this out. So you go two, three, four, and just go four in the right and four in the left. Na, 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 na. F major. the rhythm a bit more interesting you could kind of play it with an octave in your left but instead of kind of holding the left like that you can just take the thumb of the left and ghost it as I call it ghosting basically means playing that octave very very softly so you feel the pump you feel the energy you don't really hear it as like that. That sounds a bit annoying if you ask me because it's overshadowing the actual performance. So, na, 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 stuff like this. Na, 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 One is to four. few phrasings if you want like things like that you can always do by following the drummer and other musicians so that's the ballad pivot so any song you're trying to sing and play start with this see what ratio will serve my song is it a three by four in which case a 1 is to 3 could work. Is it a 4 by 4? In which case a 1 is to 4 could work. Even a 2 is to 4 could work. And so on and so forth. So that's a nice way to like just get your accompaniment cracking, you know, on track. Okay, so let's move on to the fourth strategy. This is what I call a syncopation. Very much like how drums work. So you're learning a song. You want to figure out what pattern to play. You know the chords, but you want to figure out the pattern. So... Think of how your low frequency and high frequencies are going to chat with each other. So if you take, let's say, a D minor chord, you're going to play the root here and you'll probably play the chord there. But don't collide them together, unlike the earlier version, ratios, which is still good for ballads. But here, we're trying to make more dancey and more groovy kind of music. So you, instead of going colliding both chords together I can do things like left right right or maybe left left right left left right just literally calling that out na 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 can evolve into like a nice bass line like you can also inspire other musicians who you play with or if you're doing this with another singer right you can do other things like if you know certain rhythms if you're reading a rhythm pattern let's say you're reading um a song clave which is a very common salsa rhythm which goes something like this. Cha, 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 
cha 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 so if you want to adopt that on the piano why do when you could kind of break it down you know you're not going to have kick and snare in a drum kit scenario going kick and snare together it sounds horrible they do it always have an interplay between the two drums of the drum kit or the same thing with a tabla you'll find him playing the the bass one and the the high one not together it's not going to be do 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 like that it's going to be one by one so uh, same story here so if you're doing that cha 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 maybe you could consider left right right left right left right right stuff like that So you could also gain inspiration from the actual drummer who you're jamming with or the drums in the song you know you could put put on a song and try to navigate through only what the drummer is doing uh, you could use an app like uh, moises for for instance which can isolate certain instruments and it's really cool you should check it out so you have <laughs> the challenge is of course singing it but you have to see what you can do right tabla on the piano at some point as well so syncopation is something where you just tell yourself left and right need to chat with each other so how does a chat work the two hands should not talk at the same time otherwise it becomes a useless conversation so it's the first thing the left hand says something the right hand responds like sort of like a q and a or a just a chat an interaction between the bass and the treble so to speak right i hope that will work for you and i hope you enjoy that approach of accompanying yourself on the piano i have one final word of advice on how you can accompany yourself on the piano super easy that would be just start with the melody and harmonize it how you see fit so what i mean by that is if you take a g now that's a note this note will have a lot of chords which can serve it well and there they are g ma- g major g minor e flat major maybe c major c major c minor and then e minor right you can do so many things with just g for example la da 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 la da da di di da da now what she's singing adele in the song is she's not only doing this is the end she's doing this is the end but she eventually lands on that note so be aware of well in the melody you have two kinds of notes we have the landing and we have the connecting or the passing note so if you land on g that's going to end up being a note which you want to find a chord for or harmonize as we call it so this is the end you don't want to do this is you want to harmonize the word end or the end this is the end so you choose a chord for that and as it turns out they use three chords for that this is the end g minor e flat major c major and adele takes a, a a break because she doesn't need to sing anything more there's a note g and the composer has just played three chords for the price of just one g this is the end you have so many examples like this you know where the melody is probably you don't even know what came first it's like a chicken and egg scenario whether the tune came first or the chords came first and sometimes i ask some musician friends you know how did you write that song and some of them actually don't know so maybe when you write a good song it's that chicken and egg thing which is happening you think of the melody then the chord then you think of a chord and then the chord gives you a melody things like that so just off the top if we just build some music la 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 that's b minor ta ra re ra re 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 g minor ti ra 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 re ra ra c 
titty do 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 that's a d7 ta da 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 titty do da 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 e minor ta da 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 do ta da 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 do la da di la di da la da da la da da now what chord to do there la da di what's the chord maybe that ta da da same note la 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 stay with the same note la 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 e major la da 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 glamorous way to eventually come back to a la 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 so you can also make music which is not very diatonic it can be just music which just has a note there and a chord which supports it and you don't know where it will go it becomes a, a very adventurous way to write stuff so that's that's an idea i have for you not only to you know accompany yourself but also to compose and rearrange songs and make it about the melody if you're trying to work on your chords because accompaniment needs chords and it needs a rhythm pattern so let's just recap all the five approaches towards piano accompaniment which i think you can <clears throat> definitely make some use of and let me know what you think as well in the comments whenever you get towards playing some of these patterns So we first looked at fifth chords with uh, with basically a bass movement Then we looked at building basic arpeggios 3 6 Then we looked at our ballad style which is based on ratios 1 2 3 4 1 1 In this case 1 is to 4 left hand once and right hand four times then we looked at syncopation where you have a groove in your mind like chak chak ta 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 and figure out a way to kind of execute it on the piano and last but not least look at it as an adventurous process where you have the melody as the pivot or the the focal point figure out the landing notes of the melody and then associate chords with it using a variety of strategies like one or one step would be just write down the available chords of the scale you're in and uh, just experiment just see which chord works fine and when you have to choose the chord and when you have to find the chord for a song you're also motivated to playing it a lot better than when you're just reading it off a chart so that's something i like to do very often when i learn songs or accompany songs try to figure it out on your own use your ears use your logic use your brain understand why that chord is being played in the first place <clears throat> what is it doing to the the song right right guys so that's about it these were five i hope super easy ways to accompany yourself or any of your friends or <clears throat> bandmates on the piano and maybe you could use these even in a recording studio you could use this in a band setting i hope you can use some of these concepts on stage as well if you're a singer songwriter hopefully it helps you to make some music you know <clears throat> as a singer songwriter there are a lot of polyphonic instruments out there but almost all these instruments the guitar the piano the banjo and what not will always look at standard patterns which we can cling on to while we are focusing on sort of the bigger picture which is composing a melody writing the lyrics putting it all together and so on right hope this lesson was useful continue to support the channel thanks a ton for watching don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn in the future and uh, hit the subscribe that will be very helpful there's a bell also for regular notifications thanks a ton this is jason